In this new course, we will dive into another evolving field in deep learning, that is convolutional neural network in TensorFlow. I will explain what convolutional neural network are and what convolutional layers is, and why and when we want to use convolutional neural network. And then I will explain the basic architecture of convolutional neural network and how it works, what features learning is, what kind of layers that can be used, what kind of classifications or predictions that, can be, that we can perform. And once we have some background concepts, again, we will learn it by doing. We will build a convolutional neural network to perform uh, image classifications, and you will learn how to set up and configure the features learning and classifications, how to compile, train, and evaluate the models, and finally, of course, how to use it for predictions. In the last part, we will learn some advanced techniques in convolutional neural network and dive deeper in some commonly used features learning layers. For example, convolutional layers and pooling layers, and some commonly used activation functions, for example, sigmoid, tanh, and value. There's so much content, I hope you enjoyed it. Let's go ahead and get started. Firstly, let's talk about the convolutional neural network. A convolutional neural network is actually a network architecture for deep learning, which learns directly from data and eliminating the needs for manual features extractions. A convolutional neural network has had a very great success in certain kinds of the problems, uh, especially in computer vision, so for example, image recognitions. They are particularly useful for finding patterns in image to recognize uh, several things, say so for example, objects, face, or the scenes. They can be also be very effective for classifying non-image data, such as the audio data, time series data, and also signal data. And by definitions, a neural network in which have at least one layer is a, as a convolutional layers, and then we will define it as convolutional neural network. A typical convolutional neural network consists of some combinations of the following layers, including the convolutional layers, pooling layers, and also the dense layers. And in the convolutions and pooling layers, typically they're helping us to do the feature learning. And then for the flattened or dense layer, typically they help us to create a shallow or deep new network for us to perform classifications or predictions. So let's talk about the convolutional layers. A convolutional layers is a layer of deep new network in which uh, this is just like a filter that will be passed along with an input matrix. For example, uh, we have a three by three convolutional filters or kernels like this. And let's say we have a five by five input matrix uh, like this. And then these convolutional filters will consist of line convolutional operations just like this, just like what we have for the convol convoluted features. And each convolutional operations work on a different three by three slicing of the input matrix. And you can see th there's a slicing windows here. And the resulting is a three by three matrix on the right hand side, and which um, consists of the features or the convoluted features uh, with the use of that uh, line convolutional operations. And therefore, for the time being, just consider we have an image input and then we have a kernel or a convolution filters and then we will these, use these kernels um, to capture the features from the image. And later on, we will learn the operations of these convolutional layers. 
But before then, let's talk about why we need a convolutional neural network. There are three important reasons that we would like to go for convolutional neural network. The first is that it eliminates the leads for manual features extractions. The features are learned directly by the convolutional neural network. Or you can say the features are learned directly by, by the use uh, with the use of convolutional layers. The second thing, of course, is provides a higher or a more, more accurate result in terms of the uh, computer visions or in terms of the uh, object recognitions. And it can then be retrained for new recognized recognition tasks and enable you to build on pre-existing networks. And this is talking about the transfer learning. And say, for example, in some of my videos, is talking uh, talking about the uh, YOLO <clears throat> version three or YOLO version five, and actually they are using this concept that is the transfer learning. Let's think about that. An image is just like a nothing but a matrix of pixel value. Um, just like this uh, three by three matrix, um, or three by three matrix of pixel value. So it's always possible for us to uh, for us to flatten this image uh, by uh, by three by three input matrix into a line by one vector, and then fit it to a neural network for classifications purpose. In some simplest cases or extremely basic binary image, just like this three by three matrix, this method is okay. Um, uh, everything should be fine. However, when it comes to a complex image uh, having a higher level of dimensions or having a pixels dependence, then it would have little or no accuracy at all. Therefore, another method is recommended, and or therefore a convolutional neural network is uh, is needed because it's able to successfully capture the uh, spatial and temporal dependence in an image through um, through the applications of the convolutional filters. This architecture provides an optimal architecture for uncovering and learning the key features in an image or the time series uh, data with the use of the convolutional uh, filters. It reduces the amount of the neurons, uh, the rates or the parameters significantly, and also avoids the overfitting issues uh, in deep learning. In addition, it keeps the reusability of the neurons and weights. As a result, the network can be trained to understand the sophistications of an image better, and as a result, it allows us to do the transfer learning. And we will cover more later about how convolutional filters to provide uh, such an advantage over the traditional neural network. Uh, before that, let's move on to the next part, the basic architecture of convolutional neural network. How convolutional neural network works. A convolutional neural network can have tens or hundreds of layers that each learns to detect different features of an image, and we name it as a features learning. Filters are applied, or the convolution layers are applied to each training image at different uh, resolutions. And then so for the output of each convolute image is used as the input to the next layer so that you can that you can see we have a combinations of convolution uh, layers and then a pooling layers and then a convolutional layers and then a pooling layers because filters are applied to learn at different resolutions and these outputs will then be passed on to the next uh, stack of layers. The filters can start at very simple features, such as the, as the brightness and also the edge. And then when we increase the stacking of the uh, convolutions and pooling layers, it will increase the capacities of the features that 
uniquely defines the object. Therefore, it's very common is that you will see uh, we have a convolutions and pooling layers, and then another set of convolutions and pooling layers, and then another set of convolutions and pooling layers, and so on and so. Because at the very beginning, these, these two combinations will learn the very simple features. And then later on, as, they, as it get, get deeper, it will increase in capacities to features um, that do neatly define the objects. And then these, uh, the entire architecture, we call it features learning. And once we have all these features learned by the network, we will pass it on these features to the next part that is for the classifications. Typically, it's uh, like other neural network, a convolutions neural network is composed of the input and output layers. And of course, uh, some hidden layer in between. And these layers perform uh, operations that uh, try to understand the data with the intent of uh, learning the features specific to those data. And three of the most commonly used layers are convolutions layers, activations, and also the pooling. Uh, these, um, for the convolutional layers, these put the image through a set of convolutional filters, just like what we showed before and each of which activates certain features from the image. And then it will pass it on to a activation functions, a good combinations allow for faster and more effective training because only the activated features are carried forward into the next layer. And because we would like to simplify the input, we are going to use a pooling layers to pull out the uh, the most important uh, outputs from these from the convolutional layers. This will simplify the output by performing the long linearing, uh, down sampling, reduce the number of parameters that needs the networks to learn. That means it will help to avoid the overfitting issue as well. In a nutshell, uh, convolutions will put the image through a set of convolutional filters and each of which will activate certain features with their activation functions. And finally, because uh, we would like to simplify the network, we will just use the pooling layers to down sampling the, uh, the features. And these operations are uh, repeated over tens or hundreds of layers, uh, with each layer learns to identify different features. Like a traditional neural network, a convolutional neural network has new ones uh, with rates and bias. And the models learn these values during the training process and continues to update them and improve them for each of new training samples. However, in the case of convolutional neural network, unlike the traditional neural network, the weight and bias value are the same for all hidden new ones in a given layer. And there's two advantages of this arrangement. Firstly, it will ensure that all hidden neurons are detecting the same features, such as the edge or the blob uh, in different regions of the image at that particular layers. And the second thing is that it ensures that the network is tolerant to transitions, uh, translations of the objects in an image. Say, for example, a network trained to recognize a dot will be able to do so no matter where the dot is in the image. Finally, after learning the features in many layers, the architecture of a convolutional neural network shifts to a classification. Normally, we will have a shallow neural network at the end. The next to last layer is a fully connected uh, layers normally that outputs a vectors of classes that the network will be able to predict. And this vectors um, contains the probabilities for each class of an image being classified. And then the followed by the final layers, the final layers will be a convolutional neural network architectures used for classifications layers, such as a softmax to provide the classifications outputs. 
Therefore, a typical convolutional neural network will consist of a convolutional and um, pooling layers, a stack of these combinations. And then after learning the features, after going through this features learning process, everything will then pass it on to the shallow neural network for classifications or prediction. And that's it for this brief introduction of convolutional neural networks. In the next video, we will have a hands-on exercise to learn how to build a convolutional neural network to perform image classifications. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.